Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my Star Trek The Next Generation reactions. It's been a while since I've watched one. I was on vacation for a few weeks and so I, it's been about three weeks since I've watched a Star Trek Next Generation episode but I am super excited to be jumping back into this world, into this show, into, well not into these characters, that's a little weird, but with these characters to be with these characters, well that sounds a little weird too, you know what I'm trying to say here. Today we have two more episodes, well we being me have two more episodes episodes for you this season 4 episode 7 reunion and then we are following that one up with season 4 episode 12 the wounded i am excited for both episodes reunion is a little bit more talked about at least in the comment section on my channel than the wounded honestly i've never even heard of the wounded before so i'm kind of more excited for the wounded because i know nothing about that episode but reunion i'm pretty excited for i am pretty sure some of the original cast show up in reunion just because people have told me that in the comments but i could be wrong and as you may have just seen, my puppy Huxley has arrived to watch Star Trek with us. I'm missing the shirt. The shirt is at my university, so I don't have it here at home. But in its stead, I have Huxley, my dog. She is a massive Star Trek fan. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon of uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube, as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early. Thank you so much for checking it out, and now let's get back to the video. Okay, let's get into the first episode we are watching today, which is Season 4, Episode 7, Reunion. I can detect no abnormalities in the star's radiant energy. Prepare to class one probes. Probes ready, Captain. I would have prepared three, personally. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, Klingon attack cruiser decloaking. Bearing zero one zero. We got some Klingons. Oh, Hello, it's Captain her! Picard. It's her! Ambassador Kayla. It's Kayla. Oh my God! I'm so glad I watched the other episode she was in. You again, Captain. Lieutenant Worf. She's like, remember last time we met? Because <laughs> I do. That was steamy stuff. Permission to send another officer. May I know your reason? I'll have sex with her again. You will not go into hiding whenever a Klingon vessel uncloaks. I withdraw my request, sir. Every time, it's true. Picard is so true. Every time a Klingon appears, Worf's like, you must send another person. <laughs> sir, ready to transport two from the Klingon vessel. Two. <gasps> it's a little Klingon. Is that her son? Space. The final, final frontier. frontier. Oh, it's so good to hear it again. I'm pumped. Is this actually her kid? Did she cheat on Worf? I know they weren't dating, but did she cheat on my man Worf? Not even a bite on the cheek for old time's sake. <laughs> Look how smug she is. <laughs> Sorry. I just thought you might want to talk. A few minutes ago, you looked like someone with a question. Ah, Jonathan Frakes directs this episode. That's cool. Yes. You must. Is Alexander your kid? What should I tell Alexander? That he has no father. Oh! Is that Worf's kid as well? From when they had a little steamy time. Drag in the neighboring star systems, then the Tholians, the Ferengi. The Federation won't be able to- Dude, I love the Tholians. The Tholian web? Great episode. It's about time you arrived, Picard. Oh my god, you're old. If the Enterprise Medical Facility can do anything to help. Too late. Not for him, not for him. You will act in my name to arbitrate the struggle for power. I have my reasons for wanting an outsider. Can make you can. This is so interesting. Federation officer has no business in no nonsense. The fact that he's asking Picard to do this in itself is crazy. It will be an insult by the Federation to all Klingons. Oh my days. To involve me without my permission. If I'd asked. You would have said no like you, you did. You would have said no. Exactly. Two strongest challengers fight for the right of succession. Oh, fair enough. To discover which one of them has killed me. Oh! What do us? He's hiring him as a private investigator after death. Even war with the Federation. You know what? That is so true. That is actually so true. Captain's log supplemental. 
Kempek, who ruled the Klingon Empire. Look how close those ships are. It's like they're gonna kiss. Rivals for the leadership of the I'm gonna guess. Council. I think it's Galron. I think Galron is the killer. Look how small he is. He's so... Let's not ask so many questions. I don't want to be a warrior. Oh. Worf, Worf's like, he ain't my son. He doesn't want to be a warrior. My son and I am half human. He will find his own ways. Why the son? So if he's Worf's son and her son, he'd be a quarter human. Mathematics. <laughs> because you were dishonored? As my son, he would also bear my disgrace. Oh, you know what? That's true. Why did you accept this commendation from the High Council? My father was accused of collaborating with the Romulans at Kittermer. Yeah, but it's not true. It's not true. It really happened. Lieutenant Worf, Ambassador Kalar, report to the bridge. On our way, Commander. You know, I can't lie. I love Kalar and Worf together. Their, I, their chemistry and stuff is so good. Oh, this is Duras and whatever the other one is, just with the G. What is the delay? There is no delay. It is the time I have chosen. Ha! <laughs> Fair enough. Keep that Patak away from the ceremony, Picard. He has no place on a Klingon ship. Got out. See, I don't think it's Duras because that's a name that I recognize for some reason. I forget why. Like the Sons of Duras or something like that. So the Kayla will be preparing me for my role in the Rite of Succession. Permission to speak. I'm actually excited to see this. Right of succession. Duras must not be allowed to lead the council. Whoa, why? His father betrayed my people to the Romulans. Duras is a traitor. Duras' crime was to lay that blame on your father. Oh, that's why I know the name. Okay, maybe he is the killer. Dude, if you can find out that Duras poisoned that guy, oh man, that would be a whole revelation. I think it's him now. His heart is not Klingon. Oh, wow. That was a mic drop. See, now I think it's Gowron because they're putting so much emphasis on Doris that you think it's going to be him, right? Uh, I don't know, though. Ah, it's not Gowron, then. I hope this will it's be brief. Doris. Gowron I recognize because he's got those scary bug eyes. I actually don't know who it's going to be. I keep guessing. <laughs> like, oh, I've seen this person in an episode before. But I had no idea. I love watching this. In Klingon law. What do you know of Klingon law? Garon, let's not have any sass right now, please. Oh, that was so sick. Were you concerned about me? As head of security, it is my duty to be- Oh, shut up. No, none of that head of security lies. You know my feelings. Maybe I've forgotten. <laughs> I have amnesia. Tell me again. When I left, you said you'd never be complete without me. Yeah. I came to realize that I need you, too. But now I'm nervous. Why doesn't she stick around in future episodes? Duck. We're gonna have another Worf Kalar sex scene. Oh, it's more of like a smell scene. I don't care what other Klingons think of you. But what of the boy? What is she poisoned? He may want to live. What is she poisoned? Because it's not a Klingon thing to do. And she's half Klingon. Nor can I claim your son. Oh. But he wants to so bad. That's why he's so sad. That's right. I love their relationship. Forms dictated that the challengers perform the Jashuk. It's a long involved ceremony in which- Ah, uh, well we're gonna do that then. That you stood by him before the council. I'd like to know what happened. I'm sorry, I can't discuss it. We've been waiting all day. Kavita, you will die slowly. <laughs> the way he turned the chair. <laughs> The traditional way of this ceremony, though, kind of confuses me because they list all of their worthiness for the council, but they still have to fight each other to death anyways, so what they list doesn't really matter. It will take hours. Or days. 
depending on your cooperation. I'm going to sit here and listen to you talk. It's a pretty cool weapon. Do not think of it as a weapon. Oh. Yeah. Then he values your advice. Oh, what's he going to do? A few rewards, but little glory. What do you want? She sounds so done. What do you want? Kim Beck was also stubborn. He too refused to listen. Now! He is gone. Don't let it slip. Don't let it slip. You need not make the same mistake. Oh, are you threatening her with poison? I can't. I think he did it now. Sorry, Duress. I think Gal Galron did it. Only one race uses that device, sir. What? The Romulans. What? The Romulans are involved in this now, too? So Gauron wishes to improve that relationship. A new Klingon alliance with the Romulan? There is a Klingon-Romulan alliance later on, I'm pretty sure. He also implied I'd end up like Kimpek if I didn't cooperate. Yeah, but you can't base your stuff off of implication. Can you be more specific? No. <laughs> Why are you being so secretive, man? As Chief Security Officer, I want you to accompany me to the next proceeding. They're not gonna like that. We'll just take them one at a time. She's really trying to find this out. Now that's very surprising. Our analysis turned up some startling results. Galron's acting so sus right now, I can't lie. Lieutenant Wolf is my Chief Security Officer. His presence is required. We will not proceed! If you wish to withdraw from the Jad Juk, that is your option. Dude, Picard is so good, man. Fortunately, our investigation was more thorough. Oh, I agree, Worf. A Romulan device. I will return to my ship to confirm these. As will I. Ah. Oh. Mr. Wolf, oh. please be sure to send. I don't think Goran's lying anymore. So inquiry regarding Kittimer massacre. Access denied. Restricted materials. Do she keeps coming up against these walls. By whose order? Council member Duras. No, Duras. Priority message to you from the home planet. It seems Ambassador Kalar is looking into things she should. Ah, uh, he is guilty. Move, Axie. I'm gonna let you out. It is Duras, man. Or's father was a traitor. No, the evidence was altered to make it appear that way. Oh! So at Kittimer, and you are the one who sealed the records. Your father did it. The son betrays his people to the Romulans, just as his father did. Oh! Dude, that reveal is so cool, man. It's different from all of the others. It was made from the inside out. They were in the body. Which one of them was it? Duras's man. Hey. Medical emergency. Deck eight. Room one four two. Hold on a second. Is she gonna die? Also, a little gruesome. Oh my god, dude! He's actually about to go ham mode. Get she dead? <laughs> oh, she dead and worse going super sane. Why is Alexander just standing like an NPC over there? Kill him, man. And always remember. That's his mom, dude. Stay with the doctor. War, when did you- Dude, War's actually about to beat this guy to a pulp. He's actually gonna become smudge. Taking the Starfleet badge off? This is personal, dude. Where is he? Lieutenant Worf transported to the Klingon ship board. Oh my god. Absolute, you know Darth Vader at the end of Rogue One, if you've seen that, that's what Worf's about to be doing, slaying people in the hallways. What's that doing here? He has claimed the right of vengeance. Oh! Sir, he's coming back with us one way or another. Set phasers on maximum stun. No, don't stop Worf now, dude. Oh, nice! 
That's such a cool weapon. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, okay, you didn't kill him. Oh, he did kill him. Oh my days. Dude, I thought he just put it right beside his face like they do in every show and movie, like that trope where the hero saves the person at the end. It's higher up, but no. Worf stabbed him in the throat. Or her duty. Because of the demands of their society, they should resign. Oh, no. No, sir. Good. Very good. I understand your loss. A reprimand will appear on your record. Dismissed. That was a great shot where you see Picard and Worf at the same time. The day will come when my brother and I will convince them to speak the truth. Yes. Yes. Why can't I stay with you? You deserve a home. Aww. I miss her too. I miss her. What the heck? Father? Yes. Yeah! Let's go, Worf. I am your father. Oh, I am your father. I got chills, man. What does that chair look like a punching bag? That was so good. That was such a good episode. And that was my reaction to season four. Okay, I'm just gonna be yawning now. It's fine, Oliver. Just yawn while you're talking. Season four, episode seven, Reunion. At the start, I mixed up this episode with Relics. I think Relics is the one with the original cast and stuff like that. And I, I, it's just because they both start with the letter R that I mixed it up. But Reunion, I knew nothing about this episode. I saw Kalar. I got super excited because one, I love Klingon episodes. Klingon episodes are so much fun. I love the Klingon traditions. I love looking at the Klingon prosthetics. I just love everything about the Klingons. They're just really cool in my mind. And I love how they are always portrayed as like this antag ad antagon antagonistic force. That's how you say it, right? Antagonistic force. But at the same time, they're not antagonists. And so that's that's why I just, I don't know, they're just really cool. And so when I saw this with the Klingon episode, I got really excited. And when I saw Kalar was in this episode, I got really excited because I watched the last episode that she was in as well. I forget what that episode was called now. I think it was called The Emissary and she was The Emissary. I think that makes a lot of sense in my mind. But I really liked her in that episode. She had great costumes, first of all. Better costumes in that episode than she did in this episode, although her costume in this episode was still pretty good. But that's just to say I really enjoyed her character. So seeing her back in Reunion was really fun. I didn't expect her character to be back in Reunion. I know she came back in TNG eventually. People were saying in the comments. People probably said that she came back in Reunion, like they probably said the episode, but I forgot that. So it was cool to see her and she died. She died at the end of this episode and now I'm very sad because I wanted to see more of her character. But at the same time, I think her death is very warranted. And I think that her death actually works really well within the context of the show because one, it pushed Worf to kill Duras, which was awesome by the way, literally stabs him in the neck. I thought the show was gonna do one of those things with the, the main character or one of the main characters has like that, their moral stance is better than the antagonist or something like that. And they stick the knife or they stick the sword beside the head and you think they've killed it, but then the camera cuts and they're still alive. And then the guy goes, I have murdered mercy or something you know something like that but no the camera cuts you think that he's going to be alive and no the 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 thing whatever it's called that giant sword thing that Worf has is boom right in the jugular blood everywhere and stuff like that this was a bloody episode I mean not super bloody but the two deaths in this episode were kind of gruesome Kalar's death there was a blood all over her hand there was blood on her chest there was blood on the seats and stuff on the floor it was actually kind of gruesome and that's something I've noticed about this Star Trek TNG run that I've been on yesterday's Enterprise there have probably been, been episodes before yesterday's Enterprise as well and before this episode but the two those two episodes in particular yesterday's Enterprise and now Reunion have had some pretty brutal and gruesome stuff in it like in yesterday's enterprise there was like a, a i don't know a gear or something sticking out of someone's head or a piece of metal sticking out of someone's head or throat that was slit and stuff like this and this there was like blood 
all over the seats and stuff and then a giant sword sticking through someone's leg. I don't know, but it was really cool. I also really like just seeing the Klingon culture. I really enjoy seeing the Klingon culture, but seeing their culture to succession, obviously I think Gowron is going to be the leader now. I recognized him from, I'm pretty sure, later episodes because he's got those really big buggy eyes and he's kind of a freaky guy, you know. If I saw him on the streets, I'd probably stay like 10 feet back at least, maybe even more, because if he looks at you, you probably just like melt because his eyes are so big and buggy. But I don't know, I enjoyed seeing like their, their culture of succession and how that goes and Picard was using the ancient ways and Instead of the the normal ways but it was interesting i was a little confused by their traditional ways their more traditional ways of succession where they have to like name everything that they've done like all the wars they fought all the battles they've done everything is honorable about them to to show their worth i thought that was a little strange because in the end they still have to fight each other but maybe if it's there's like eight contestants and they all have to prove the worth and then the moderator can like whittle it down to just two who then fight each other i'm not quite sure how that works i was a little confused by it if there was just two because like obviously those two are going to be the ones fighting each other even if their one is a little bit more honorable than the other it all comes down to the fight at the end so i was a little confused by that but i don't know anyways kalar's death also it was very significant for worth i was got a little off track there kalar's death was also a little significant for worth because he got to say that he was the father to Alexander and Alexander by the way super cute kid he was he was so I've never seen a Klingon child before I, I, I at least from memory I've never seen a Klingon child before he was so tiny he looked like he was like this big he looked like a little bean <laughs> but you know Alexander was was very adorable when Worf was like look at look at death like have you ever seen death like look at it remember it and stuff like that that was that gave me a little bit of chills like that was a really cool line and it was I don't know it was it's was like oh you know what I mean like oh but then at the end when Worf's like when Alexander asks Worf is he if he's his father and Worf's like yes I am your father oh that I don't know it just felt so good finally he's kind of like going getting past this shame that he's felt from trying to, I don't know, be, uh, not necessarily be in his Klingon father's shadow because that was all a lie and Duras lied and stuff like that, but the shame that was on him, it's starting to lift now that Duras is dead. It's starting to lift and he can finally accept these things into his life again, including the son. So I thought that was another reason why Kalar's death was warranted. Like, it's super sad that she died. I was actually shocked that she died. I thought she was going to be alive at the end of the episode or something, but no, she's gone but I think her death was very important to Worth as a character in general which is why I appreciate it. Besides that, I thought Jonathan Frakes did a great job directing this episode as well. There are some pretty cool camera moments. The moment where Picard was talking to Worf about these consequences when you're a Star Starfleet officer and that you have to kind of put your ideologies aside when you're serving Starfleet and stuff like that. And Worf is standing on the left side of frame close up and you see Picard in the background in focus talking to him. And you get to see both perspectives, Worf taking in the information and stuff and Picard kind of laying into him a little bit. I thought that was a great shot. There are some other great shots as well and yeah I thought Jonathan Frakes just did a great job and I love seeing him direct because it's just cool when you can see the cast member on screen you knowing that they are also directing the show I think that's just cool as well anyways I've talked a lot and it's probably a little bit of a scrambled review I kind of just kept going on tangents here and there but I, I hope you enjoyed that review of the episode I really enjoyed the episode and now let's get into the next episode which is season 4 episode 12 the wounded we're on a mapping survey near the Cardassian sector. Ooh, it has been nearly a year since a peace... I heard that they're big in DS9. I've been sent to make preliminary overtures to a truce. I have lowered my shields as a gesture of goodwill. And then they open fire. Damage the impulse engines before I could regroup and run. The Cardassians have no honor. <laughs> Worf hates Cardassians. Engines known. That looks disgusting. Sweetheart. Oh, they're dating. Wonderful food that you're accustomed to. But I'd like to do the same. Isn't that what marriage is about? Oh, they're married. What kind of foods? Scallop. I like that this guy has a little bit of character development. Oh, she didn't believe in a replicator. She thought real food was more nutritious. Oh, yeah, it is. Maybe I'll have something special for you tonight, too. Oh. <laughs> more kelp. <laughs> Stations. Uh, Cardassian ship preparing to fire again. Why are they firing? Ow. Bro, why are you firing on the Enterprise right now? Aye, sir. Ready. Fire. 
actually gonna destroy you. Continue phase of fire. Multiple hits. Worf's like, yes, we're taking the other Cardassians. I hate them. Me and my boys hate the Cardassians. I am Galma Set of the Cardassian ship. Oh my god, they are so ugly. Federation Starship, which destroyed our space station in the Quayar system two days. I really like the look of them, though. They're, they look cool. For us to continue firing at one another. And in such a contest, you would be at a disadvantage. Yeah, fair. One hour. Dude, what the heck? The Cardassians actually look so sick. They're super ugly and stuff, but they look super sick. I really like the the metal that goes around their head. I don't know. That just it's just cool. Ba -da -da -da. Captain, you confirmed your report. It was the starship Phoenix. Uh, the dude, the Phoenix sucks. Benjamin Maxim sucks. Oh, Maxwell. Sorry, my bad. He must have had provocation. I wish we yeah, he was wounded. The wounded. The Federation is not prepared for a new sustained conflict. You must preserve the peace. This is a big task. I'm comfortable with Cardassians on board. I don't want any incidents. Yes, Captain. Wow. Huge conflict between them then. Will you and the counselor meet our guests in transporter room three and inform Chief O'Brien I will be called. Chief O'Brien's the guy that we saw who wants oxtail, right? Dude, they actually look so cool. What the heck? These prosthetics are insane. Are we? You know something. You know something. <laughs> Troy's like, I'm on to you. <laughs> I know. I know what you're thinking, O'Brien. Sector 21505 now, and there's still no sign of the Phoenix. In fact, you have, have no sure beards here. And sir, with Benjamin Maxwell, I thought that he might be able to provide some insights. Please. Maxwell lost his family during a raid on an outpost. Oh, God. Like sabotage, sir. It was on Setlik 3. Probably Cardassians, right? Can we confine our discussion to the facts? Now, Mr. O'Brien. Warp to Captain Bic No, 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 I want to hear what he's going to say. Go ahead, Mr. Wolf. Long-range sensors have located the Phoenix. Oh, that's good. Uh, why are we following O'Brien? Something's about to happen. If Captain Picard orders me to tell you everything I know about Ben Maxwell, I will. But who I choose to spend my free time with. Oh my god. Oh, that guy kind of looks like he's gonna cry. <laughs> I wanted to say hi to O'Brien. <laughs> if he is intent upon revenge against my people, he must be stopped before he can do more damage. I mean, fair enough. There you are. The data casserole. I'm sorry, that looks Dish. gross. She is uh, trembling right now. The minstrel War boy and to glory. the war is gone. Sounds like very Klingon. People in that room who still don't like the Cardassians. I imagine that's to be expected. Yeah. It's toll on people. What are these little dark things? Yeah, I was gonna ask Cape. her actually. Oh, that makes sense. Skirmishes. When I was with Captain Maxwell. Well, how do you feel about them? Yeah, you don't like them, dude. The pursuing ship is the Phoenix. And the other? It appears to be a Cardassian supply ship. Oh, no. We're doing everything in our power to reach the Phoenix. Yes, and accomplishing nothing, I'm sorry to say. Uh... If you will give us the transponder frequency, or are you going to stand... Dude, this is such a tough situation. Mr. Wolf, has there been any response to our hails? No, Captain. Goodbye, Benjamin. Relay the prefix code to the Phoenix. Oh my god. The push in. The push in. Mr. Wolf, now. Wolf is not like this. Oh god. Oh god. That was great camera work, though. The, the slow push in to Picard while he said that. That was super dramatic. It has positioned itself outside the weapons range of the opposing ship. The Phoenix has powered up both phasers and photon torpedoes. This is so cool. It's firing photon torpedoes. It's gone. It's dead. Sir, the Phoenix is firing on the- No! Oh no. Dude, this Benjamin guy's gotta be stopped. At our present speed of warp 4, 16 hours, 44 minutes. Dude, warp faster! Increase to warp 9. 
Yeah, why weren't you going warp 9 this whole time, idiot? I count myself lucky, sir. I've served with the two finest captains in Starfleet. Aw, he says two names that are Picard. <laughs> he never missed a minute's duty. Always had a smile, a joke. That doesn't mean that something's not wrong, though. They're the ones you should be investigating, not Captain Maxwell. You don't care for the Cardassians. I like them fine. Stop lying to yourself. I think when one has been angry for a very long time, one gets yeah. used to it, and it becomes comfortable like, like old leather. And finally, I'm so familiar that one can't ever remember feeling any other way. What a good way to put it, man. This is so interesting. This is like a psychological evaluation, almost. Like PTSD almost, like the effects of PTSD and stuff like that, and trauma on someone's life. Well, if I join you? Oh, yay, that's good. I think here's your hail, Mr. O'Brien. This has been hard on all of us. Yeah. I know I'll be happy when I'm back on my own ship. Aww. I guess that's true. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, you know, I didn't even think about them having feelings, you know what I mean? When he said that, I was like, what the heck? He's actually a person. We're told the outpost was a launching place for a massive attack against us. Well, the lies, dude. I was with a group of women and children when two Cardassian soldiers burst in. Oh no. We struggled. One of the women threw me a phaser and I fired. The phaser was set at maximum. Oh God. When I was a kid, I'd, I'd worry about swatting a mosquito. So he almost feels guilty looking at the Cardassians because he killed one of them. It's not you I hate, Cardassian. I hate what I became. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. Our weapon systems. A lie, Golmaset. I was studying the terminal interface system. Are they up to something? What business did you have going near one of their computers? Oh, interesting. Mr. Wolf, please accompany him. Gladly, Captain. They're speaking with their eyes right now. I'm not sure I would be so generous in your place, Captain. Thank you. Why? They just have untrustworthy faces, you know what I mean? Crave war. Yeah. You need it. On both sides, probably. The lasting peace begins here, with the two of us. Good. Bridge. Good. I'm actually very curious. I think, does Benjamin just like, he just kind of couldn't take it anymore? Or is there actually a secret plot? Welcome aboard, sir. I'm Commander Riker, First Officer. I know all about you. Guy does not look like someone who just killed 650 people. Oh, Commander, best I see your captain straight away. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Captain. A pleasure, Captain. Please sit down. You must think I've got- The Picard's still standing. The power. Military supply port. How do you know this? Information comes my way. From whom? Where is your doctor? Yeah. I know what they're doing. Oh, no. No, this is just in his mind, basically. There's no good reason for a science station in the Quayar system. See, he just killed a random science station for no reason. You weren't under fire. Lives were at stake. Whose lives? Yeah. We had to act now. What? No one was shooting at your ship. You have killed nearly 700 people. Yeah, God. Taken us to the brink of war. I have prevented war. How? How? I did what had to be done. What had to be done? Hmm? For whom? Picard asks such good questions. I believe it is because of what they did to your wife and your children. Woo! You're a fool, Picard. No, he's not. Picard is... A lot of things, but he ain't no fool. Find one of their supply ships, and we'll see how irrelevant it is. We're not going after any more Cardassian ships. We're done here. Phoenix and the Enterprise will return to Federation space together. Those are Starfleet's orders. Okay, okay, escort them back. The only alternative is to put you in the brig, and to tow your ship back to the Starbase in <laughs> disgrace. Oh my god. I will return to my ship. No. You understand your orders. No, he's gonna try and leave. Or fire upon you or something. I'm of arrival. Aye, sir. Captain. What the Phoenix it? has changed course. I knew he was gonna try and run. Phoenix is such an ugly ship too, just blow it up, man. Mr. Worf, will you hail Captain Maxwell? No response, Captain. 
data projected. So sad. You can't, like, if you explode the ship, you kill so many innocent lives, right? Because Benjamin Maxwell is the only reason why they're doing this. Ensign Warbase, overtaken. Captain, the Phoenix has accelerated to warp nine. Oh, God. Ensign Warp nine. Aye, sir. Mr. Wolf, arm phases. Oh, my days. Vessels are within visual range. On screen. Yo, Brian, to talk, man. Ship is running with a high powered subspace field. Oh, is he trying to prove it? Is he trying to prove it? It's obeyed a direct order. Board the ship. You'll see that everything I've been saying is true. Board the ship, Picard. The vessel will not be boarded. Board the ship. Just board it, man. He's against the wall. He'll strike. Captain, the Phoenix is transferring power to its shield. Oh, God. When you've been through what we have, you, you tend to get inside someone. He might listen. That's what she said. Cycles, there's a window of a 50th of a second. Trust me, I can get through. A 50th of a second. Oh, wow. Get him to board the damn ship. He won't do that, sir. Will he turn his weapons on a Federation starship to protect the enemy? Yeah, because you're kind of going crazy. What the hell has happened to this war? Sorry. This war is over. There is no... There we go. Yeah, he just outed himself. That's what everybody thinks about the enemy. That's probably what they think about us. Yeah, so true, man. We do not make surprise attacks on manned outposts. I mean, you do. The human race has done that before. What was the name of that fellow who always hung around you like a puppy? Stumpy. Stumpy. He died at Sedlip, didn't he? A lot of people died there. What was that song of his? One he always sang, one I liked. The one that... O'Brien was singing earlier. On and his wild heart this is so captivating. Though all the world betrays, shall God one faithful. I'm not gonna win this one, am I, Chief? No. No, sir. Dude, this is so well done. I have chills. So many chills. Loyalty that you would so quickly dismiss does not come easily to my people, Galmasa. You have much to learn about us. And same with you. I, for one, am grateful he is under lock and key. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Those ships were not carrying scientific equipment, were they? What were they carrying? Cargo ships running with high energy subspace fields that jam sensors. Ah, oh, there's some truth behind it. If I had attempted to board that ship, I'm quite certain that you and I would not be having this pleasant conversation. Ah, oh, fair enough. So change your ways. I assure you. Take this message to your leaders, Galmaset. We'll be watching. Oh, oh, on the boom? Oh my god. Oh, good episode. Good episode. And that was my reaction to Star Trek The Next Generation Season 4, Episode 12, The Wounded. And another great episode. Sorry, it's like very hot in my room right now. It's like 25-ish degrees in my room. There's no air conditioning. My legs are so sweaty, they have actually stuck to the chair. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just sweating quite a bit, but you know, well, we'll uh, that's a little gross. So you don't need to know that information, even though I just said that to you. This episode was really, really good. I enjoyed it so much. I loved the Cardassians. I loved the Cardassians. They were super cool looking. They were super interesting. Their history was really cool with Starfleet and the personal connections that the Cardassian race has with some of the crew members. I also loved that O'Brien was in this episode a lot. It was almost like an O'Brien episode in general. As O'Brien had some of the biggest moments of the episode, I didn't expect there to be two men singing this, this old war song with pure silence during this high stake moment and that for that to be the climax of the episode but that was the climax of the episode and it was so enthralling and enticing and it just took my breath away that was so cool i love the cardassian ships i love the implications at the end of this episode i just really loved this episode i don't know if i loved it more than reunion per se but i still really was captivated by it and the cardassians i'm like 99 percent sure are pretty big 
in DS9. So I think this was a good episode to watch before DS9 because it was an introduction to the Cardassians. I learned a little bit about their history. I learned a little bit about themselves. I learned about the actual, like what they looked like and stuff like that. So I thought it was a pretty good interest, in, interest what am I trying to say? Introduction to this species of alien. But yeah, let's talk about O'Brien for a bit because O'Brien is a character that I don't really know. I see him around from time to time in the transporter room. You know, he does a little something here. He does a little something there. He'll have a couple lines, but he's never really done much in the episodes that I've watched. Obviously, we are in season four. He's probably done some things up until this point in the show, but for me personally, he's never done that much. And so seeing him, maybe he's not like the center of the episode. Obviously, Picard and the Cardassian captain are kind of the center of the episode, but O'Brien is a big part of the episode and the biggest moments of this episode for the most part come with O'Brien and his knowledge of Benjamin Maxwell who was also a pretty interesting character and I really liked what this episode did but with discussing trauma and almost this like post-traumatic stress stuff from from not just serving in the war but also having your family killed by these by this species of alien and how over time this trauma can build very silently the wounded probably I'm I'm thinking is is in discussion with Benjamin Maxwell and how even if you try and keep that anger and that trauma at bay and stuff like that and you can see him very fine on the outside it's really bubbling and building and building and building on the inside until finally as this episode discusses it explodes out and Benjamin did something that he'll probably end up regretting by killing 700 people 700 people he killed like that is absolutely nuts but I loved how he broke down at the end the the singing moment between O'Brien and stuff anyways let's get back to O'Brien O'Brien was really cool in this episode because one I've never really seen him before but two he was just very like I don't know intelligent and I really liked the dilemmas he was facing in this episode how he had to kind of confront his own biases maybe even unconsciously at times they I think they were unconscious at the start and then he kind of he kind of came into them and how he had to confront himself confront his biases in order to really understand the situation it was very hard for him because this whole episode was very personal to him because not only was he did he serve Benjamin Waxwell and did he respect and admire Benjamin Wax M Waxwell Maxwell but he also didn't like the Cardassians not because of what they did but because what they turned him into uh, and they turned him into a killer because he had to kill one right and so at the very start of the episode he's like very passively aggressive to the Cardassians and I was like well this guy hates the Cardassians but then when he's talking to his wife but by the way is a wife that's kind of cool but when he's talking to his wife he doesn't actually realize that he is was rude to the Cardassians he doesn't realize that he has this bias that he hates them or dislikes them and stuff like that and his wife enables him to see that and then he kind of progresses a little bit and he kind of looks inward and is like why do I have issues with this race, with this species of alien with the Cardassians? And he, he realizes it's because of what he had to do to protect himself and to protect others. He had to kill and he never thought he would ever kill before and stuff like that. And so, boom, they turn him into a killer. Boom. He Now he has to reflect. But then there's also the issue of Maxwell and how much respect he has for Maxwell and he almost has to he has to push that aside a little bit to kind of look at the bigger picture to see what Maxwell is doing to this species and push all the biases to the Cardassians aside push the respect for Maxwell aside and really take charge of the situation which he did at the end and that singing moment oh my god that singing moment was so good the way that the camera slowly turns to face them and then Maxwell is like what's that song that I think his name was Stumpy that Stumpy used to sing that old war song whatever he said and then they start singing it obviously O'Brien sings first and then Maxwell joins along and it's just silence besides them singing it's just absolute silence and the camera is still it's just staring at them they're just singing in harmony Maxwell stops first O'Brien finishes the song Maxwell stops because I think he finally understands he kind of he kind of slows down to a stutter and then stops before the end of the song because I think he's finally understanding what's happening what his situation is and stuff like that kind of what he has done in a way maybe he's not acknowledging all the way but he's kind of he's starting to understand that this anger has consumed him too much and stuff like that, that this is a battle that he's not going to win. He actually says that in the episode, I'm pretty sure. But that whole moment, 
I didn't expect it in this episode. I thought we were going to get some form of firefight or something like that, but we got this very almost not, it's not anticlimactic because it was super climactic, but it was like a very mellow climax because that singing was the climax of the episode but it wasn't lasers it wasn't fights and stuff like that it wasn't yelling it wasn't screaming it wasn't epic and grand it was quiet just two men in harmony singing and that was the climax of the episode and i think that is one of the reasons why i really really like the next generation as the i mean I, there are probably bad episodes of the next generations and since i am peeking through them i am only watching the really good ones or the good ones and stuff like that i'm not watching the bad ones at least not yet but from what i've noticed of star trek the next generation and even the original series and stuff like that is that the episodes don't have to end on a bang the a lot of these episodes can end on these really nice quiet moments these moments that are very, I don't know, introspective and stuff like that. These moments just between one character or two characters that feel grand, but are very small moments in terms of they're not ship battles and stuff. They're just two people in a room doing stuff. And I think that's why I like it so much because one, it's very unexpected. You expect these grand things and then you end up with something that feels grand, but it's very mellow, like two people singing. But at the same time, it feels, I don't know, it just... It just feels like there's so much care put into characters and so much care put into story and stuff like that that it's an easy way out just to use lasers and ship battles and stuff like that to finish everything but to have a really good character moment as a, as a climax of an episode that feels like it's ramping up to a ship battle and to make that climax feel very special and unique is very well done by the writers. I don't know if I explained that point very well but I have a lot of respect for the ending of this episode. And then obviously like the ending ending of the episode when Picard's like it, it is that it isn't like just science stuff, right? Like there's obviously going to be something else happening if the ships are so protected and stuff like that and then the Cardassians trying to be like no 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 it's all peace but that ending was really cool because I think the Cardassians are going to be antagonists I don't know if they'll pop up in the next in like TNG in the future maybe one or two episodes but I'm expecting them to be antagonists in Deep Space Nine and so this was a cool little thing where it's just like keeping this storyline in your head that they maybe do have something planned and maybe Maxwell was right to some extent, Maxwell was right, just not going about it the best of means. He was obviously just killing people without actual evidence. But Picard knows that there might be some truth behind what Maxwell was doing. So he's keeping an eye on it. So I think that was a cool, almost like a little bone chilling ending to the episode. Like there is this looming threat out there with the Cardassians, this possible looming threat out there. What's going to happen? Anyways, I think that's going to be it. I've talked a while. I really enjoyed this episode. As you can tell, the Cardassians were super cool and I'm excited to see them in the future, whether Star Trek The Next Generation or Deep Space Nine. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. I'm really excited for next week's episodes of The Next Generation as well and these two episodes blew me away. Like, they were a great way to get back into the next generations because one was a Klingon episode, one was a Cardassian episode, both about these alien groups. Cardassians I didn't even know I would enjoy, but I really enjoyed. Klingons I really enjoyed. We got cool moments, really epic moments, really just beautiful moments and stuff like that. And yeah, I can't wait to see what the next generation has in store for me next week. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next Star Trek The Next Generation reaction.